self-love right now obviously this week is the week of love it's been valentine's and so it's a big topic of conversation but for me self-love is the most important thing i personally believe that you have to master as a human being because ultimately that is your starting point that is where everything else is born from how you view yourself how you treat yourself sets precedence everything else that happens to you in your life ultimately self-love is the appreciation that you have for you now we all know that a lot of us including myself in times gone by did a lot of work on this don't necessarily have a, a healthy level of self-love now that is not because you've intentionally done that <clears throat> because generally what happens with self-love is it gets knocked due to experiences. They can be childhood experiences, very strict, rigid parents who have had an ideal that you haven't been able to meet. Sometimes it can be very strict religious backgrounds. Sometimes it can be very kind of, um, it can be just like through life experience where you feel like you've not been enough and you download the belief that it is you. You're the problem. And so tonight what I want to do is I want to focus on one of the biggest areas of, well, there's a number of things which I want to share with you that would quantify having a good, healthy self-love relationship. And there's a number of things that you can do to be able to rectify that. For the nature of tonight, I'm going to choose one of those areas and just dive deep into it and give you a mini training on this. So if you're watching this on replay, give me a hashtag replay. If you're coming on live, then do say hello and let's dive in. The first thing I want to start with is a question. And I guess this question is really cool because it's going to give you the answers to where you're at with your relationship with your self-love. And the question is this. What do you really want for yourself? What do you want for yourself? And you can just grab pen and paper and just scribble some notes. What do you want? Have you ever asked yourself this? What is it you want for yourself? And at what point in your life do you want this and why? So this is kind of like, this question is something you can just, if you're on replay, you can pause, but you can do this. You can start doing a bit of it now, but you can really spend some time afterwards diving deep into this and spending some time to reflect on what it is you personally want. Why do I ask that? Because often when we don't have enough self-love for ourselves, we put everybody else first and we forget about our own personal needs, which I'm going to dive more into in a sec. So what is it you want? What point and why? I will leave that question with you and you can have a have a little play with that and see what comes out of your pen. It's a very interesting, quick exercise that will be quite enlightening, I can promise you. It will show you whether you're on track with your self-love or not. Here are some of the following examples that self-love is in action. And I wanted to share some of these because we're not going to do all these tonight. We're going to choose, I'm only going to be working on one of them. But these are some of the guidelines that you're doing all right with your self-love. And I've written them down, so I'm going to read some of these off. So... You're assertive in life. You take action and you don't worry or think about what you don't. As long as it's not harming someone else, you don't get worried or bogged down by other people's opinions. You don't you don't let others take advantage of you. So you're boundary. You're able to obviously let people in, but you're also very clear on what's what's acceptable for you and what's not. And you put your boundaries up energetically. You prioritise your health and well-being. Do you? Do you actually? Ask yourself that question. You spend time around people who support you, circles of friends, or, people, or even the people that you just happen to hang around with. Are they supportive or do they tend to pull you down? Be honest. If you're not surrounding yourself with people that are supportive, then who are you surrounding yourself with? Are they toxic, pulling you down, or are they good for you? And be honest. Other things that will show that you are doing well is you ask for help and you don't mind. It's like you realise that we're, we're a planet of, of a community and you can't do everything yourself and asking for help is fine. You don't get embarrassed with it, you ask. 
and you let go of grudges. So when you have got really good self love and self worth happening for you, you don't hang on to grudges, you just let them go. You make healthy choices. So you might sometimes feel stressed, but you'll you'll be aware of it and you'll do something that is going to support moving through that stress rather than creating unhealthy choices that is just going to keep you propelled in that experience and you accept your imperfections which is really important because nobody's perfect and the list goes on but there's one main thing here that I really want to anchor into and that is this you allow yourself to meet your own personal needs what does that mean quite honestly when I was in my lowest ebb back 12, 15, 16 years ago, whatever it was now, I can honestly see how I had no boundaries and none of my needs were being met ever. It was survival mode. And often this is what happens. We don't even see it creep on, but suddenly we are not meeting our own needs because we we're letting everybody else's needs be met before us. Now, we have to take some personal responsibility for this and say, you know, actually, if our needs aren't being met personally, then there's only one person that can change that, and that is ourselves. So it it's almost like when something, when you end up getting, your confidence gets knocked and you're experiencing, like, mental health issues, it's very easy for everything to, like, crumble and fall apart. But at some point, you have to take a step and go, right, this is not acceptable anymore, and... I am the only person that can make this change. Now, why is it important that your needs get met? Simple. When your needs are not met, you end up feeling, whether you're consciously aware of this or not, you end up feeling angry, resentment, frustration, and the list goes on. When your needs are met, you will notice that you feel quite content and happy. In that small shift from not being met to being met changes everything about your life. So what is a need? Well, we have, to we have different needs. We have physical, emotional, spiritual, mental different needs, an array of them. And one of the best things that you can honestly do is grab paper and pen right now and just literally write down what is important to you. And I'll give you some, uh, some categories and I'll give you some examples. So, for example, what is important to you about your health needs? And it might be like, it's really important that I'm able to have a balanced diet and cook from fresh. Or maybe for you, what's really important about health is that you get outside every single day in the fresh air. Or that you get to the gym three times a week. Or you go for a run or you do some press-ups at home. It can look varied and wide and it's your own personal journey and it's totally up to you. But what's important to you when it comes to health? And just write that down. Second, what's important to you personally? So in your personal life, like what's important? Is it important that you connect with people, friends like every single day? Or is it important that you connect with friends once a week? Is it important for you that you, you know, go, go out and go out in the town twice a week? Is it important that you go to the theatre? What's important to you? What's important to you that you do for you? And again, it's bespoke. There's no right or wrong to this. It's what you feel. For some of you, you might not be that social. It might be like, you know what, I could speak to a couple of people a week on the phone or on Zoom or at work, and I'm kind of good if I only like have a physical meeting with friends once a month. It's your journey, whatever works for you. So we've got health, we've got connection. Right, let's go family. What's important to you about family? What is important to you about your family? So is it important that you live in a certain place or that you do certain activities together or, you know, simple things like you always sit down and eat dinner together or you at least try and eat dinner on a Sunday together? What's important to you? And again, you might want to pause this if you're watching this on replay, but just make the list. Now, we've got physical. So what's important to you physically? So for me, for example, 
it's important to me that I move my body every day, whether that's a, a brisk walk or I go to the gym or I do something. It's, and it doesn't have to be a lot, but it's just important to me. What's important to you? And then we've got we've got career or, or progression or business. What's important to you in that area? And what's important to you overall in your life? So you can make a list. So for example, for me, it's really important that um, I am spiritually connecting every single day, that I meditate every morning. I have these morning rituals that I do every day. And if I don't do them, I can get away with not doing them for a day because if something comes up and I'm busy. But after that, it really starts to like feel like it affects my, uh, my chi, my energy. And it's too important for me to miss. So it's more important that I do it than miss it. What's important to me also is that with my work is that I'm making a difference. So it's really important that whatever I'm doing, I'm giving 100% and I'm making a difference to people's lives and that they're enjoying what I'm doing and that we're creating a, a relationship and that it's transparent and it's, and it's got integrity and it's full of growth and honesty. So, you know, what is important to you can be a vary, various of things. So just start making that list, okay? Right, next. Now you've got your list together and you can spend a bit of time putting this together of what's important to you. You're going to go through every single one of them and be honest and mark them out of 10 of where you're at on the scale of these being in your life to where you want them to be. So... I'll take the word meditation. So for me, I have to meditate every single day. It's part of who I am. It's just part of, it's like I breathe, I eat, I meditate. It's just, that's it. It's non-negotiable. So for me, my meditation's a 10. I'm very good at it. I don't hardly ever miss a beat unless there's just something that's, you know, family something or, I don't know, Christmas day and everyone's up too early or so. I don't know. I hardly ever miss it. So for me, I'm very, very good at it. So mine is a 10 out of 10, right? So there's, I'm, as long as I keep doing what I'm doing, I feel like I'm actually on point. If I felt that I wasn't so good at it, it might be more like a five or a six. So I would then know that there's some work to do. So you go through every single point and you mark it out of 10. Now you might have 50 needs. You might have three needs. Again, it's bespoke. Once you've gone through that, your next step, very simple, is you're going to be very honest and ask yourself and going through each one so let's take meditation let's say it was a five out of ten i would ask myself what one thing can i implement that will take me one step closer to moving the gauge to a 10 right so i'm at a five i need to be a 10 and i might come back with i'm going to set my alarm 30 minutes earlier every single morning so that i can get up and meditate five days a week Monday to Friday, that might be my first step that will take me to like an eight or a nine out of 10, right? And I'm gonna start that tomorrow. So that would be me creating a plan around how I was gonna move my gauge, my needs be met up and towards a 10. And you go through every single one of these until you have an action plan. Then you take your action plan and you transfer it into your diary and you start simply actioning it. Now I know I'm making this very sound really, really easy. And it's not difficult, but there's quite a bit to it. So I do get it that if you're feeling you're struggling a little bit, you might you could need some support. So two ways you can do that. One, we you can join the membership and there's a group community which we would help you support through, which is probably the easiest way to do it. But also, you're more than welcome to reach out on the, in the comments below if you've got any questions around this and myself and my team will answer. So my suggestion is, is that you take this and replay it back if you need to and just work your way through this like an exercise. Now, what happens when we start to shift our needs and they start becoming met? As I said earlier, you go from regret, you go from resentment, you go from anger into feeling fulfilled. What do you think happens if you don't start allowing your personal needs to be met? 
Well, over time, quite simply, it gets out of control because the more anger, the more resentment, the more frustration you unconsciously start to build, it's like a fire, right? So you keep building a fire and putting more and more petrol on it, it gets bigger. And the same happens to us. An unresolved, unconscious, negative emotions like that then start to manifest in our lives as dis-ease. We're, we're out of ease with what's going on in our life. We've got a dis and an ease. And the only way to bring back ease into our life is to counteract what's going on underneath which is to start implementing the things back into our world that we don't, don't just serve us, that we need. There's, no, there's a reason why a need is called a need, because we need it to feel engaged, alive, fulfilled, expansive, and the list goes on. This exercise is not really an exercise that I would take lightly. <laughs> it's an exercise that you... Um, I would invite you to do if you want to make some positive shifts in your mental health, in your spiritual health, in your physical, emotional health, put this and into place and address what you're not doing. We're a work in progress. There will be things that you're not doing and that is okay. You're just a human being and all of us are progressing consistent, continuously. That means that sometimes we have to do these things to be able to just bring ourselves back into order. And when you start addressing your basic needs and they start becoming met, life changes dramatically. It changes so dramatically. You Crazy things like you actually start to feel more energised. And why? Just because your needs now being met. You start to gain inner confidence and inner strength. You'll find that you'll be able to say no more easily without guilt. You'll be able to be more bounded in your life, which will allow you to have more time and space for one of the most important people on this planet, which is yourself. And as I always say to everybody, this is not selfish work. This is selfless work, because if your well is empty, you have nothing to give anyone else. It's impossible for you to go and save the world if you're not sorted. You have to work on yourself first. That's why when we get on an aeroplane and they do the safety test, the first thing they say is if there's going to be some sort of like, I don't know, we're going to end up having to do an emergency land and the oxygen comes down, the first person they tell you to put the oxygen mask on to is not your child first, they ask you to put it on yourself first. And the reason for that is because if you're passed out next to your child without the oxygen, you are no help for your child. So you have to help yourself first. And this is what self, this is what self love's about. If you don't step up and take responsibility to help yourself first, it's impossible for you to give anything to anyone else. You haven't got any more reserves. It's not, you, you know, there's only so much we can do. So this exercise I've just run through, if you're doing it on replay, just go back to the start and replay it and give me a hashtag replay. You can still give me a hello, even if you are doing this on catch up. It is probably one of the most important mini exercises that will propel you back into really shifting your relationship with yourself in a very short period of time. So have a go and let me know how you get on. And if you've got any questions, just feel free to, um, yeah, to reach out.